What's up, everybody? It's DJX here from Alpha Cybersecurity, and today we're going to take on day five of the Advent Cyber event from Try Hack Me. Uh, before we get into the video, please remember to like the video, share it, comment, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications. Uh, so this way you'll be notified when we have more content like this or InfoSec Unplugged that comes on every Thursday. So with that being said, let's hop right into the challenge. So here we have the day five of Advent and Cyber. Looks like it's gonna be blind XSS. And the video is done by none other than the Hamsek once again. So uh, shout out to him uh, doing two days in a row here. And it looks like we're gonna go through some blind XSS stuff or blind cross site scripting. So uh, we see the story. So we're gonna just go ahead and just start the machine. Uh, so we can get that out of the way so it's going to take a few minutes but uh that's fine and then we need an attack box yep let's start the attack box as well all right so this is going to take about two minutes so in the meantime we'll just go back and let's read the the story so says here the l forum is where all the l's express their joy and excitement about christmas but grinch enterprises has one bad admin account and they've installed a plugin that changes all mentions of christmas to buttness <laughs> oh boy <laughs> mcskitty needs to find that admin account and disable the plugin so the objective here is we're going to learn about what cross-site scripting is uh, the types of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, and then we're gonna, we're gonna hop into the challenge. So what is cross-site scripting? Cross-site scripting, better known as XSS in the cybersecurity community is classified as an injection attack where malicious JavaScript gets injected into a web application with the intention of being executed by others. If you can get JavaScript to run on a victim's computer, there are numerous things you can achieve. This can range from stealing a victim's cookies to taking over their session, running a key logger that will log every keystroke the user presses um, on their keyboard while visiting the website, redirecting the user to a totally different website altogether, or performing some kind of action on the website, such as placing an order or resetting their password, etc. So you can use cross-site scripting to launch, launch it as just that attack or you can even use it to um, chain it to other attacks as well, like it's cross-site request forgery and stuff like that. So uh, don't wanna get too far off, so we're just gonna continue on with this video. What types of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are there? Cross-site scripting vulnerabilities fall into four different categories. There's DOM, reflected, stored, and blind. Each type is quite a complex subject which we'll try to cover briefly here but to gain more in-depth understanding you might want to try this room after completing the challenge and it looks like there's a cross-site scripting room okay so the first one they want to cover is DOM DOM stands for document object model and is a programming interface for HTML and XML documents it represents the page so that programs can change the document structure style and content a web page is a document and this document can either be displayed in a browser window or as the HTML source. DOM-based cross-site scripting is where JavaScript execution happens directly in the browser without any new pages being loaded or submitted to the backend code. Execution occurs when the, when the website JavaScript code acts on input or user interaction. An example of this could be a website's JavaScript code getting the contents from the window.location.hash parameter and then write that onto the page in the currently being viewed section. The contents of the hash aren't checked for malicious code, allowing an attacker to inject JavaScript of their choosing onto a page. Uh, there's reflected, which is usually the easiest one. Reflected cross-site scripting happens when user supplied data in HTTP request is included in the web page source without any validation. An example of this could be an error message which is in a query string of a URL and is reflected onto the web page. The URL could look something like the following and this gives you an example of the website and a login and it looks like right here the parameter so that is reflected right here. The error message could be replaced with JavaScript code which gets executed when a user visits the page. 
Then we have stored cross-site scripting. As the name inferred, cross-site scripting payload is stored on the web application in a database, for example, and then gets run when other users visit the site or web page. This type of cross-site scripting can be particularly damaging due to the number of victims that it may affect. An example of this could be a blog that allows visitors to leave comments. If a visitor's message is not properly validated and checked for cross-site scripting payloads, then every subsequent visit and finally, we have blind cross-site scripting. Blind cross-site scripting is similar to a stored cross-site scripting attack in that your payload gets stored on the website for another user to view. But in this instance, you can't see the payload working or be able to test it against yourself first. An example of this could be a contact form. In the contact form, your message could contain a cross-site scripting payload, which when a member or staff member views the message, views the message it gets executed. All right, so we're at the challenge walkthrough. Uh, it says click the green start machine button at the top right of this task. We did that. And then we'll go to the following link, which is right here. Here you'll find the L's forum where they talk about and spread the joy of Christmas. As you explore the forum and click on different topics and threads, you'll notice that every mention of Christmas has been changed to buttness. This is because the Grinch has an admin account and has installed a plugin that changes every mention of Christmas to buttness. You'll need to take over the Grinch account and disable the plugin to restore the Christmas joy. Okay, and then what goes into the, looks like it goes into the instructions here. All right, so we'll go back to our machine. Scroll back up. So we did the start machine. Okay, so we'll go back to showing the split view. We'll open up Firefox. Copy here. Paste into the clipboard and then copy from the clipboard. And then paste there. Okay, so we'll clear this, close this out. And now it looks like there's the L forum. Uh, let's just click around for a little bit. So there's our login page. We have the general. Looks like there's a thread here, and then you can see some of the buttness comments. Go back to the forum. <laughs> buttness dinner. Sorry, I'm childish this morning. Okay, so we have more forum and then we have the workshop and then the workshop reminder again it says log in so it says uh, we can use the username of mcskitty and the password is password don't save that and then if we click on the settings link, let's see. So we click on the settings link, it looks like we can change passwords here. Um, just want to go back and check a couple other things. So, okay, so it's still just the forum site. Okay, so it says here, you can click the settings link, which we can do here, and we can change the password. Try changing your password to pass123. Okay, so we'll say pass123. We'll update. Don't save. And then it says the password has been changed. And if you actually look up here in the URL, it actually passes through in this URL. So you see the settings parameter, and then it says new password equals pass123. So, I mean, essentially, you could probably, you could actually put that in a cross site scripting payload. Let's not jump ahead. Let's not jump ahead. Let's let's see if we're this is where we're going with it. Um, now let's go back to the form and visit one of the threads. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll notice that you'll you'll be able to comment. So let's just go here, and it says you can do hello, and then you're gonna do an HTML tag for underline. And then we'll just do world. We'll follow this. We'll follow the instructions. And then we're going to close that underline. 
So if we leave the comment, what should happen is if the HTML gets passed and it's not validated, then yep, you there you can see that that underlying tag worked, and that would tell you uh, that the website is uh, vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So now that we know that the website is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, now we can run um, XSS payload to change the passwords. So if we go here, we can actually just run this script. So we'll just copy it. And like I said, I'll just paste it in here. Wow, let's close that, okay. All right, so now we will leave another comment, which is the script and fetch this website or this URL. So we're gonna fetch that settings and then the new parameter, we're gonna change it to, uh, let's just switch it up a little bit. Let's say pass one, two, three, four. Sure, why not? Actually, let's make it a little bit more secure because you should use more secure passwords. And then we'll say exclamation point. And then we'll hit leave a comment. You don't see it here in the comment itself because uh, it's blind. But if you go to view page source and then you search for password that you put in, you'll see here that it shows that the script fetch settings new password is right here. So that tells you that it's been executed. So if we go back and now we log out now we log back in and let's say we use Grinch and now for password we do pass one two three four exclamation point and we log in you'll see that we logged in successfully and if we go into settings since we are the Grinch and we have the admin panel we now have our plugins panel which allows us to disable the butt miss plugin so the plugin has been disabled and the joy has been restored to the forum and there is our flag. Okay, so now that we have our flag, we can copy it over into the clipboard, go down to our question, paste it, no more butt miss. <laughs> and we have answered the question correctly and we have completed the task for day five. So that's something we do at the live stream uh, whenever we complete a task or capture a flag. It gives us our little victory pose. So that's day five. We have completed that. Now we can go ahead and terminate our machine. And we can terminate the target. And we are all set. So that was day five of the Advent Cyber for Try Hack Me. If you like this video, please go check out the videos I did for days one, two, three, and four. It's actually five of them that are up because during the live stream in day two, ran into an issue during the exploitation side, so I had to re-upload it so I could show you guys the exploitation piece for day two. So make sure you check that video out as well. Also, please remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications so you'll be notified whenever I go live or I post any content like this. Also, make sure you tune in to Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern for InfoSec Unplugged. I do that live just about every week where I have a guest come on and we talk about our experiences and just things that are going on in the world of cybersecurity. So be sure to check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think and what you want to see next. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.